Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful Another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another day Every day I open my eyes I see morning light, morning light I know that the Lord just brought me through the night Through the night So I face a challenging day Before he take me away behind to the grave Success on me This wonderful morning It's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another A pleasant morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer, brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is July the 10th. Mm -hmm. And day is gone just like that. Only 20 more left or something like this before the month is ended. July 10th, time is flying. It's a beautiful Monday morning here. The sky is blue with just slight touches of puffs, hints of gray on there. Wind is blowing mightily from out of the east, northeast, and let me tell you, the sea looks very, very angry. Them coconut trees are not having a nice time, but birds are singing, and we are blessed to be alive. We're going to kick things off this beautiful, beautiful Monday morning with this one entitled, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Let's have a listen. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love what Thou dost love and do. rendition of breathe on me breath of god did a lovely one we're going to continue then getting our words here up on screen for july the 10th in 2023 and let's see if i can make that happen in three two and there we have it the lord is in his holy temple let all the earth keep silence before him words from habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20 if you are following along in your books of common prayer we are on page 35 using versicle 
Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our prayer of intent. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended God. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle de Venite, which is based on Psalm 95, verses 1 through to 8, and can be found on page 34. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King of all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. As he is his, and he made it, his hands are molded to the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our God. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and his people with his truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, that might have been unjust to our neighbors, that might have been unkind to ourselves, or might have been displeasing to our life. For those times and those moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in our goodness, and keep us in life everlasting, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 1, 2, and 3. And leading us in the reading of the Psalm is Miss Shalima. Now, let's have a listen. The Psalm appointed for today is as follows. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful, their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by the streams of water, bearing fruits in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doom. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the people mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt and the princes plot their plot together against the Lord against his anointing let us break their yoke they say let us cast off their bonds from us he whose throne is in heaven is laughing the Lord has them in his discern then he speaks to them in wrath and his rage fill them with terror I myself have set my king. Uphold my holy hill of Zion. 
Let me announce and decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. And the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod. And shatter them like piece of like pieces of pottery. And now you kings be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear. And with trembling bow before him. Lest be angry and you perish. For his wrath is quickly kneeled. Happy are they all. Who take refuge in him. Lord, how many adversaries I have? How many there are who rise up against me? How many are those who say of me? There is no help for him in his God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call aloud upon the Lord, and he answers me from the holy hill. I lie down and go to sleep. I wake up again because the Lord sustains me. I do not fear for the multitudes of the people who set themselves against all around. Rise up, O Lord, set me free, O my God. Surely you will strike all my enemies across the face. You will break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Your blessings be upon your people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. We want to thank Miss Young for leading us in the reading of Psalms 1, 2, and 3. And Miss Shalima is reading in honor of the birthday of her son, Arya. Our second canticle this morning is the canticle, The Song of Christ's Glory, based on Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, it can be found on page 50. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in the likeness of men. Being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Bible lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Luke, Luke chapter 23, verses 44 to 56. And reading in honor of the birthday of Arian is Miss Shalima Young. Let's have a listen. The reading for today is taken from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 23 verses 44 to 56 a it was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two then jesus crying with a loud voice said father into your hands i commend my spirit having said this he breathed his last when the centurion saw what had taken place he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came with the Jewish tongue from the Jewish tongue of Arimathea, 
and there was a waiting expectancy for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb, where no one had ever been laid. This was a day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how the body was laid. They returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the, on the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Ms. Shalima for leading us in both the Psalms and the reading for this morning. And we want to wish baby Ariel a happy and blessed birthday. If you allow me a couple of seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading here from Luke chapter 23, verse 44, 2 to 56. And let's see, I can make this happen. Yes, I can. There we go. Now, you would have heard Luke 23, where we're finishing up with the Gospel according to Luke chapter 24 comes up by the ending of the week, I believe. Um, and let me tell you, well, I think it comes at the middle of the week. But time is running out for Luke. And we would have heard in Luke the trial of Jesus last week before Pontius Pilate. And then, of course, the questioning by Herod and the pastor, the demand for a miracle. And then we would have heard, of course, a second trial before Pilate, in which Pilate tried to release Jesus, but instead just ended up, well, after chastising him, yielding to the desires of the leaders of the And the crowd made its choice. They had to choose between Jesus Barabbas or Jesus of Nazareth, and they chose Jesus Barabbas. And so we would have heard about the crucifixion of Jesus and his death and his burial. Of course, Simon carrying the cross unwillingly and we sometimes being unwilling to carry our own. The fact that Jesus spoke to the daughters of Jerusalem to remind them that they should weep not for Jesus but for those who would be left behind who would not find truth in him being the Messiah. Yes? And I mean, hmm, wow, weep for those who reject me is what Jesus was saying. And then, of course, the, gru the gruesome crucifixion, the nailing to the cross. And we would have missed some of that simply because it was the weekend and we don't have uh, um, morning prayer on the weekend. But, of course, during that period that we would have missed on Saturday and Sunday, it would have been Jesus on the cross. It would have been his words from the cross. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. The people chiding him. He saved others. Let him save himself. You know, the inscription on the cross, this is the king of the Jews. And just the people mocking Jesus as he hung there, dying for their sins. We would have heard as we're leading right up to verse 43. Had we done Bible morning prayer on the weekends, we would have heard the one criminal that was hanging on Jesus' right. He coming to find salvation even while on the cross. And that for me is a big thing. When the one criminal who hung there was blaspheming against Jesus. Yes, he reasoned that if Jesus were the Messiah, he should save himself and save them. Why was he being crucified? Which was the understanding of a lot of people. But the other criminal, yes, and Matthew and Mark both have this with me now. They, they both have that in the final hours, one of the criminals came to see things differently and actually put his trust in Jesus. Do you not fear God, he said, showing respect for God. Yeah, He's under the same condemnation as us, even though he does not deserve it. He recognized his own sin. This man has done nothing wrong. He recognized the innocence of Jesus. And he calls Jesus Lord and asks Jesus to remember him when he comes to his kingdom. And he believed the promise of everlasting life existed from Jesus. And of course, Jesus' response is one of the most beautiful things I've heard in the Bible. Jesus says to the man, Assuredly, I say today to, to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And he answers and meets the trust of this second criminal, assuring him that his life after death would be with Jesus and would be in paradise not torment and that was a big verse for me and i really wish we had time over the weekend to look at that but yeah maybe we consider 
doing morning prayer on the weekends. We really think about it. But that's big for me because this is something truly remarkable. It's a deathbed conversation. Yeah? And, and it is a conversation in which one could walk away knowing that that criminal died with not with despair, but with the hope of eternal life as was promised by Jesus. And if it is there significantly, it means then for us that that same trust that we have will or can be rewarded with the same promise of paradise. And right after the conversation with the criminal, the second criminal, who was promised paradise that day, Jesus himself dies on the cross. And he dies and there's remarkable changes to the earth. There's this darkness that overshadows the earth as if though all of creation is crying out because God, you know, because Jesus is dying. The whole land, a darkness come over, right? From noon until three in the afternoon, the sunlight failed. So it's darkness, you know? And and there's this Roman historian, Phlegon, yes? And he said that in the fourth year on the 202nd Olympiad, there was an extraordinary eclipse of the sun. At the sixth hour, the day turned into a dark night so that the stars in heaven were seen and there was an earthquake. That is what a Roman historian wrote of an occurrence that happened that is supposed to be at the same time, well, at along the same time frame for when the crucifixion was happening. Yes? And, of course, it would mean that this eclipse, the whole of creation, blacking out the cause of what was taking place, and this earthquake that tore the temple veil in two, hmm? as a symbol when Jesus was dying. And Jesus, when he was dying, used his very last breath to submit himself to the will of God. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last, says the reading there in 46. And it's interesting because the tearing of the temple veil signified that man had access to the throne of grace through means of the death that was taking place on the cross. And it's amazing that Jesus would have energy even to commend himself unto God, yes, as he died. Having gone through all he did, the, 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 the long nights, because it was two nights he was there on trial and walking back and forth, you know, from Pilate to Herod and back to Pilate, and then being mocked, being pushed around, then being scourged and beaten, and then nailed to the cross. How he had the energy to physically get through that is still beyond my comprehension. But he is the son of God, so I don't need to understand it. And it is this beaten, battered, broken human that on the cross speaks forgiveness, that on the cross offers salvation, that on the cross continually committed and commended himself to God. His last breath, as difficult as it must have been, sustaining his weight on the cross, finding enough air and enough space to push through the pain in order to continue to breathe. And with his final breath, he says to God, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Wow. That is, that is deep. That is heavy. No? And, and, his work on the cross was accomplished. And this was a prayer from the lips of Jesus. Sing his living spirit to God as he had yielded his body to Jesus. You know? And, and all his life, so submissive to God, even to the very end. If that could be, the example that we follow. And once the work on the cross was accomplished, Jesus had no further need to endure suffering. He yielded his spirit. That's it. And what stands out for me is the reaction of the bystanders who are witnessing this thing. When the centurion saw what had happened, he praised God and said, certainly this man was innocent. 
at the death of Jesus on the cross, this Gentile centurion, not even a Jew, a Gentile centurion, noticing what is happening, what is transpiring, is so moved that he is now a Gentile convert to the faith of Christ. Not even seconds before the death. I mean, after the death of Christ. Immediately he gave glory to God and he understood Jesus for whom he was. Certainly this man was innocent. He was a righteous man. And I'm sure this centurion possibly saw people being crucified before, but there must have been something remarkable about Jesus, about what he said, about how he held and conducted himself during this whole thing that would have transformed this Gentile follower. Hmm? And of course, the people are gathered around because there's a spectacle to be seen. And like good people, hmm, humans, when there is something happening that we gather around because we're nosy and we're curious and we want to see and we want to experience. And some of those who came were the Palm Sunday crowd that had become the Good Friday crowd, but some of those were loyal followers of Jesus. Hmm? And the crowds that had gathered there saw what had taken place. And even some of those who would have been yelling, crucify him, crucify him, when they witnessed the death, were shaken and went home, beating their breasts. To see how remarkably Jesus would have lived in his life. To see how his ministry would have affected so many people. Hmm? To lose this man was a great loss for many in the society. And those were the ones who went home, beating their breasts. But then, like Paul will tell us later in the New Testament, we do not want you, brothers and sisters, you know, to weep or to grieve as those who have no hope. And those who went home, beating their breasts, went home because they felt they lost the promised Messiah. But they did not, they felt this way because they did not remember that he had told them that he would rise again. And so they went home beating their chests, weighed down by all that they had just seen. And the women and those who were his close acquaintances stood by at a distance, seeing and noticing all of them. And one of the things they would have noticed is this fellow, yes? A fellow by the name of Joseph of Arimathea. And Joseph was a member of the council. But Joseph did not agree with what these people were doing. And it's interesting because Joseph, a member of the council, approached the Jewish, the, the Roman leadership. He went directly to Pilate. And again, here is a, not necessarily a partnership, but an example of the willingness that had existed between Rome and the Jewish leadership. We heard about it last week when the Jewish leadership were pressuring Pilate and pressuring Herod to crucify Jesus. And in this instance, Joseph of Arimathea is going to go to create a new link. Yes? But now yielding to a side of Pilate that feeds into what Pilate originally was feeling. Remember, Pilate tried to not crucify Jesus. And when he realized there was nothing he could do, he tried to remove the guilt from himself. And so when Joseph of Arimathea goes to him, he himself already knowing that Jesus was an important figure, agrees to give, Jesus, to give uh, Joseph the body. And it wasn't a custom that the body would be taken off of the cross so quickly. The tradition of the Roman crucifixion were that criminals that were crucified, their bodies were left on the cross to rot or to be eaten by, by, by vultures and other scavengers so that, so that passers-by would see how this, how this gruesome death awaited anyone who tried to rebel against Roman authority. You know? And 
Passover was coming. So the Jews probably didn't want such a horrible display during the Passover. And there were a few instances where the Romans were known to grant the body of, of, of a crucified to friends or relatives for a proper burial. But it was a rare thing. And it's even more rare that Joseph did not serve Jesus in many ways. Right? But he did serve him in one of the best ways he could. By dignifying his death with burial, at a proper burial. And it wasn't even a really, really a proper burial because they were running out of time. It was the day of preparation for the Passover and the Sabbath was beginning. So all he could do was take down the body, wrap it up in some linen cloth and take it to a rock that was hewn out as a tomb. A tomb which it is believed no one had ever been in. And because it was the day of preparation, because the Sabbath was beginning and the feast of the Passover was right there, they didn't have time to do a proper burial. And it tells us even the women who had followed him from Galilee, they went to see how and where his body was being laid. But then they gone back home to prepare the spices and, and, and the things needed for the, and, and, and from the, for the anointing of the, God, the body of the dead. They didn't have time to do it then because the Passover feast was coming. So he didn't get a proper burial on the day of his death. Because Sabbath. And it's interesting for me that they didn't remember Jesus saying Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. They still held on to their Jewish practice despite all Jesus had pointed to with regards to the Messiah being bigger than any of the Jewish practices. But so they were unable to prepare the body properly. And horribly they placed him in this borrowed tomb. And I can't even begin to imagine what the Sabbath meal and the Passover meal would have been like for the followers of Jesus. It was a time where we remember fondly that God delivers us from hardships and bondage. Where we recount the tale of Moses leading the people by God's hand out of slavery and it is generally was a time where we where they ate and they drank and they remembered joyfully their deliverance but even though they were there that sabbath experiencing the greatest deliverance they would have ever experienced the deliverance won through the life of christ over death and sin and the grave there was no joy in them that sabbath for they had lost their master and as far as they could see Evil and death had prevailed because they forgot the promise that Jesus made that on the third day he would rise again. They celebrated the Sabbath and rested according to what the commandment said. But it was a Sabbath like what? The sadness that must have filled their hearts and the room where they were in. The fear, the doubt. Not having the Lord with us. Feeling like we are separated from the love of God. Is a dark and sad and good. But the truth is we have to remember the promise. Know that I am with you always. Even to the end. And it is likely. It, is, it could be likened for us. To a dark and bleak day when storm clouds are on the horizon. The promise that we must hold on to is that even when we can't see it, the sun is still shining. And like them on that Passover, even when we feel and we can't see him, the presence of God is always with us. No matter the triumphs, no matter the tests, no matter the tribulations. Know that even when we can't see or feel him, God will never leave us alone. His love transcends all space and all time. That was the sacrifice Christ made. 
to share with us God's saving and universal love. The reading ends on a sad note for those who are followers of Christ. But the story is not complete. Tomorrow, we look forward to hearing what will happen next as we read and live with hope that though we may not see him, our Lord is our Amen. Let us continue with the profession of our faith, words of the apostles. Together we say, I believe in God, Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into Him and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Okay. Your will be done on earth as it is in Give us today our day. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from for the kingdom, the power, and the kingdom. Now and forever. For our suffrages, we use suffrage C on page 40. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. God, keep us from all sin. Mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope. Our first collet for this morning is the collet for Pentecost proper. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart, united to one another with pure affection, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. morning we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday on Sunday was Mr. Brent Harris, Miss Beverly Barton, Miss Perla Westby, Mr. Ryan Simpson, Miss Shauna Aviness, Mr. Alfred Taylor, and Miss Lillian Sullivan. Celebrating a birthday today is Miss Glenda Reed, Mr. Ariane Young, Mr. Robert Holton, and Miss Marsha Mejia. We want to wish all those of you celebrating birthdays a happy and blessed birthday. We remember in prayer Mr. Nigel and Miss Bernard and Redhead who celebrated 45 years of marriage on the 9th of July. Congratulations. Happy birthday to those celebrating birthdays. In our prayers, we continue to give God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith Miss Irene this morning. Ms. Rose, Ms. Grace, Ms. Selim, Ms. Maria, Ms. Norma, Ms. Mary, and Ms. Joyce. We pray for Ms. Monica, Ms. Sylvia, Ms. Lynn, Ms. Ace with Ms. Justine, Ms. Lisa, Ms. Soila, Ms. Mary, Ms. Janet, and Ms. Lynn. We pray for Ms. Margaret, Ms. Myrna, Ms. Janice, Ms. Dylan, Ms. Alma, Ms. Marlene, Ms. Crystal, Ms. Amelia, Ms. Valencia, Ms. Derla. 
pray for Miss Betty, Miss Martha, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss Oshaw, Miss Alta, Miss Teresa, Miss Molly, Miss Agnes, Miss, Miss Lena, Miss Lametta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Pilot, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, and Miss E. We pray for Miss Priscilla, Miss Jean, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Del Rodin, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, and Miss E. We pray for Miss Marilyn, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Amir, Miss Nina, Miss Leonor, Miss Gladys, Miss Robin, Miss Amen, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa, Miss Lucia, Miss Joan, Miss Ismay, and Miss Ari. We pray for Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kenya, Miss Delina, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Miss Carolyn, Miss Gretel, Miss Sam, Miss Bernard, Miss Brenda, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominic, Miss Nadia. Miss Sheila, Miss Scott, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Curla, Miss Shelma Dean, Miss Lindsay, Miss Susan, Miss Kimberly, Miss Shanice, and Miss Pex. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Seal, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kendrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Rudolph. We pray for Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Mr. Ian, Mr. Bill, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Is, Mr. James, Mr. Walker, Mr. Carlos. We pray for Mr. Lee, Julie, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Lee, Mr. Mark. Mr. Emmett, Mr. Jennifer, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Sean, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Summers, Mr. Michael, Mr. Mr. Ambrose, and Bishop Asu. We want to remember and pray as well for Bishop Rank, Mr. Richard, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Grayson, Mr. Kinger, Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lowe, Mr. Irving, Mr. Chris, Mr. Lester, Father Mark, Mr. Lee. Mr. Kieran, Mr. Peter, Mr. David, Mr. Ernst, Mr. Paul, Mr. As we remember him while on the phone, we also pray for healing for persons who have contracted those in the isolation of those who care. We give God thanks for them. And we give God thanks for partial containment as we pray for the of school. As we pray for those who are infirm, we remember and pray for those who offer care for those that are infirm. Giving God thanks for the ministry that they offer persons who are ill. We remember and pray for the and all medical professionals in the We remember and pray especially for my doctors in Mina, Montanero, Monica, Arya, Shogun, Arnold, Ken, Aram. Thank Clarence Joseph Sutter and the Brown Nurses Care, Ms. McKinney, Ms. Gilles, and Ms. Avella, Ms. Sherina, Ms. Joyce Lina, Ms. Alberta, Ms. Kira, Ms. Alejandra, Ms. Olivia, Ms. Rupian, and Ms. Shane. For all of our nurses, our lab technicians, our radiologists, our pharmacists, persons that work in the kitchen, the cleaners, the admins, the security men, the persons in office of administration and staff. Of medical institutions, both in public and private entities, continue to ask for your service to him and your service to others. We say a special prayer for those who fear that there is none to care for them. Pray together according to the sick. Heavenly Father, give of life and health, comfort and believe your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to them. That those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for me. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the comfort for those who are leaving the works of the Lord. Remember and pray. Family of Mr. Anthony, this the family of Canon Lee Flowers, the family of Mr. Wong, family of Mr. Janya Ines, 
family of Mr. Christ's cousin, family of Samuel Bernard, family of Ms. Monica. For all those who are doing so for governor, those preparing to lay and the one we pray for its comfort and peace upon you during this time of evening, and we pray for eternal rest with those who are. In our prayers, we continue to ask Almighty God for His protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Randall, Abby, Ashley, Anwar, Karina, Rhea, Kutai, Akua, El, Ariel, Nana, and Helen. We pray for our loved ones, praying for Kathy, Jason, and Jeffrey, Abby, Charles, Barry, and Asia. In our prayers, we continue to pray for those who are most vulnerable in our society. We remember and pray for the poor and the elderly persons with pre-existing health conditions, persons struggling with cancer, lupus, autoimmune illnesses, persons suffering from substance abuse and addictions and all the ailments that come with persons battling with mental health issues and depression, persons facing instances of of violence and abuse of any kind. We pray for God's protection and provision over those who are vulnerable in society. We continue to pray for the compounding crisis we are facing, for the decision makers to make some decisions that will benefit our economy. We continue to pray for those who have lost employment, persons who, who are seeking for work but can't find, all those who are struggling financially to make this need. Continue to pray for God's provision over your needs. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the various branches of our security forces, our Coast Guard, our police officers, our BDA. We continue to pray for the government. We pray for our Governor General. We pray for the Prime Minister and the opposition. We pray for all our ambassadors. We pray for all who work in the public service, especially those who are to get to work. Give God thanks for the work and for the benefit of our God. We continue to pray for our churches and the church leadership, for the private sector, for all non-governmental organizations who are involved in any form of humanitarian. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the members of the international those affected by the ravages of war, those affected by the ravages of disaster, those affected by civil suffering. Pray for ourselves and our region as well against the ravages of hurricane and other natural disasters. For the prayers of our hearts, if our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God hear our words. Conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the words of your commands. Under your protection now and then, we may be preserved so, through Jesus Christ. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in the presence of Almighty God and to be able to greet each new day in your presence as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. We want to say thank you as well to the members of the Belize Kusio Movement who led us in worship last uh, Sunday, Sunday gone right here yesterday. We want to thank the Bishop and Mrs. Wright along with the online ministry and the online music team that worked together in order to make these services possible. Speaking of services, following this broadcast this morning, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. to close off our day. I invite you to join us for any or all of these services as you are able. And don't worry, don't worry. If you miss it at the broadcast in time, you can always revisit the Facebook pages of any of our Anglican churches in the Diocese of Belize, as well as the Christ the King and on the Facebook page, the YouTube channel of the Anglican Diocese. Please do know that we are thankful for your partnership and for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese. We're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication followed by the grace, the dismissal and then our final. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, we thank you for the gift. May the lunch and to our feet and light to our parts and the strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with one entitled, Bless Are the Pure in Heart. I really like this one, and I do hope you enjoy it. I want to thank you for joining me this morning. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless. <laughs> Bye for now. This wonderful morning It's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray And say thank you Lord For another day Good morning Me neighbor good morning That's how everybody did do This wonderful morning It's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray And say thank you Lord The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me never good morning. The how everybody they do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another day. It's another 